So to start off, I'm going to go ahead and assume that all of you have been practicing declaring your variables and uh, whatnot. Uh, so I'm not I'm not going to explain that stuff in depth. I'm going to assume you already have this stuff down. So to begin, we're going to start with simple addition and subtraction. And I just want you to follow along, and you should notice that it's fairly straightforward. So you can start by declaring your variable as so. And then if to use these two variables in our arithmetic, you know, operation, you could do several things. You know, you could hold, you could declare a variable called result and hold the arithmetic value of the addition of num1 plus num2. You know, that'll hold the value of this operation. So if we wanted to actually output that, we could see what the value is after this operation. And you should see that it's 11 as so. And the same thing if we wanted to do subtraction. You know, you just add a, a minus sign, a hyphen. And when you output that, you should get negative 1. Negative 1. So you can see that in C++, addition and subtraction are fairly straightforward. And I do want to show you a few things, you know, with respect to hard coding values. So if we wanted to do num1 minus 4, we can do that. We can hard code the value in there in C++. That's fine. We'll get 1. And I also want to show you another output trick. If we wanted to just output the result of num1 plus num2, we can do that. We can output that result and we'll get 11. So there's lots of different things you can do with addition and subtraction. And all your basic uh, order of operations rules do apply here. So if we wanted to output, you know, num1 plus num2, you know, minus 4, that's going to, it's going to do the order of operations to do this. So it's going to start in parentheses, do this operation here, that'll result in 11, and then subtract 4 to give you 7. And we're just going to output that all at once, and we get 7 as so. So I want you to play around with the addition and subtraction, and you'll find that it's fairly easy, and that there's lots of stuff you can do with it with respect to output and order of operations and hard coding values, etc. But let's move on to multiplication and division. Okay, so same thing with multiplication and division. We're just going to go ahead and put the whole operation in this output screen right here. So we're going to see out num1. And then for multiplication, it's not an x, as some of you may think, but it's actually an asterisk. So num1 times num2, which will give us 30 in this operation. And when we output, we get 30. So mul multiplication is fairly easy. And you know, like I said, order of operations, again, applies here. So if we wanted to put that there and then plus 7, we should get 37. And I do believe if you, you know, if you, if you remember this stuff from math class, you don't even have to have these parentheses here for this operation because multiplication will come before addition. Multiplication, division first, and then addition and subtraction come after that. So if we run that, we will still get... 37 you know so it's different it's not going to do num1 plus 7. you know if we even put just to kind of prove to you if we put 7 plus num1 it's still going to do this operation first and then add 7 we'll get 37 so I just kind of want to show you the importance of order of operations in C++ because the rules still do apply so let's let's do something like this let's let's change num2 to 30 Okay, and let's let's try some division. In division, you would just do num2, and then the backslash is the division sign, num1. And if this works right, it's going to be 30 divided by 5, and it's going to output 6. So that's fairly simple right there. And you could do the same thing. Again, order of operations. You know, if I wanted to add... 2 to this will get 8 no matter where I put it you know I can't put it in between here because if I do something let's say I do something like this let's say I do uh, you know num1 divided by 5 plus num1 that's gonna be it's gonna basically do this first actually let's do this you know this is a cool order of operations because here you have addition but you have division first, 
So you might say, well, division is going to go first. Well, that's not true because parentheses goes before multiplication and division. So here, it's going to do this operation first, 5 plus num1. So that's going to turn into 10. And then it's going to do the division. So 30 divided by 10, and it should output the number 3. And if we run that, that's exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get 3. So this stuff, if you practice it enough, it's going to become fairly straightforward and you're going to realize you can do a lot of cool stuff with this arithmetic operations. So one more main arithmetic operations I want to show you is uh, the modulus operator, which is the percent sign on the keyboard. And what this does, this returns a remainder value from a division operation. So just to kind of show you, we're going to change num2 to 11 and leave num1 at 5 and we're going to hold result equals num2 modulus operator num1 now I want you to think about this this right here this operator is basically returning the value to hold in result of the remainder of the division operation. And if we divide num2 by num1, basically we're going to get 11 divided by 5. 5 will go into 11 two times with 1 being the remainder. So this operation will store the number 1 into result. And if we output result, you'll see Oops, hold on one second. If we output result, I think I hit the wrong key. Yeah, here we go. We get 1, which is the remainder. And I kind of want to show you that. You know, if we do also, you know, all the rules apply. You know, you can do, I mean, I'm sure this becomes fairly clear to you, but you could do result plus 4 right here. See how re result plus 4, you know, you can do, that's going to do 5. I just kind of wanted to show you that real quick. Okay. And, uh, but going back to the modulus operator, you know, let's do another, how about let's do this. Let's, let's do two modulo operators, uh, in a row. So let's do, just so you can kind of see if you can guess what the value will be after this operation. Let's do the value 14 here. And let's output result modulus operator, modulo, whatever you want to call it, result modulo let's do 2 okay so think about this result is holding the remainder of this operation and then we're outputting the remainder of this operation so think about that for a second and I want you to try to guess what the outputs gonna be now if you guess to 0 you're correct because what's happening is result is holding num2 divided by num1 and the remainder, which is going to be 4, okay? Because 5 will go into 14 two times with 4 left over. And then we're going to output 4 divided by 2 and the remainder of that. Well, there isn't a remainder of 4 divided by 2. It's 0 because 2 goes into 4 evenly. So when we output this, we're going to get 0. And it's that easy. Now, before we actually get into concatenation, which may sound like a, a difficult topic, which it's really not, I just kind of want to discuss this using namespace standard one more time with you guys, just to give you an idea of why it is in our code. And the reason why, I told you at the beginning of this series not to worry about it, and that we just, the reason why we're putting it in our code is to make our lives easier. And I want to show you, it's because when we do something as simple as see out hello world and we try to output that if we don't have this using namespace standard all of a sudden our code falls apart and we get an error right here an error and it says error c out was not declared in this scope well without getting into too much detail this namespace is including a function uh, c out the standard function c out the output operators so we need using namespace standard just to do simple 
you know, standard operations such as I'll put Hello World to the screen and then end the line. Now there is a way to get around this obviously. You could take this out and do something else uh, to use this function, but I don't want to get into that yet because that's more of an advanced topic. I wouldn't consider that a good topic to discuss with absolute beginners in programming. You know, that goes into um, using namespace functions, which I consider an advanced data structure. You know, it's similar to a class in a way, which is going into object-oriented design. And that's not something I want to get into in this series with you guys, because I just want to cover all the basics. And then when you get this down, maybe in a future series, we'll go over advanced data structures and object-oriented programming. But for now, we're going to keep it simple, and we're just going to keep using namespace standard in our code. That being said, let's move on to concatenation, which is a simple, and my opinion, it's a, it's a simple topic, even though it sounds um, difficult. And all concatenation is, it's basically the addition of strings. And I want to show you that, what I mean. So if we do string first name equals Tom, and then string last name equals Jones, then we can actually out do, you know, something like string full name equals first name plus, let's add a space in there, plus last name. And we can output that. We can output full name, and it will output Tom space Jones. Let's run it. And as you can see, Tom Jones appears in the console. So, that being said, that's basically all there is to concatenation. Now, there are a few rules. Um, you know, if you mess around with it, you're going to find out you can't do stuff like output Tom plus plus Jones, when you output that you get an error. So you need to have a variable in between your raw strings. You need to be adding a raw string to a variable when you do concatenation. Either that or two variables together if you understand that. And if you don't, I would say just practice this concatenation topic and it will become a uh, simple to understand you know when you can use concatenation and when you can't and just messing around with it you should you know uh, get enough errors just playing around you'll say oh okay I get what he's saying you know you have to have you know if, if I wanted to do output Jimmy plus um, last name I can do that I can say Jimmy Jones but if I want to say Jimmy plus Jones, I can't do that. That'll throw an error. So that being said, that's basically all there is to string concatenation. There are some, um, you know, built-in uh, library functions that you can use, but we'll get into built-in functions later in this series. For now, I just want you to mess around with concatenation, and I wanted to just show you why we have using namespace standard in our code. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.